Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. This week's video is an introduction to foam rolling. I will briefly explain what is a foam roller, show you a few examples and give you a little bit of an insight on how to pick the right one for you. And I will also explain a little bit about what it's used for and a bit of the science behind it. And if you stick to the end, I will share with you my top favorite foam rolling exercises. Simply put, a foam roller is a cylindrical tool used for self fascia release, a form of self-massage, so to speak. And it's used to alleviate muscle tightness, improve flexibility and reduce muscle soreness post-exercise. It's typically made out of a foam or hollow harder material and it comes in various densities and sizes. And whilst there are various types of foam rollers available, the scientific research has yet to determine a definitive superiority amongst them, except for those that incorporate vibration. Combining vibration and foam rolling has been found to be superior with better effects for range of motion and pain when compared to traditional foam rolling methods. So how does it work and what's the science behind it? The idea is to use your body weight to apply pressure to specific muscle groups by rolling over the foam roller. This pressure helps to release the tension in the muscles and the soft tissue underneath, normally the fascia, with similar effects to that of a soft tissue deep massage. There is a lot of research on foam rolling, but overall, science has shown that first of all, foam rolling is temporary and improves performance. Secondly, it decreases delayed onset muscle soreness post-training by about 50%. Thirdly, it improves pain. And lastly, it improves flexibility and range of motion. But having said all that, when compared to other traditional things like stretching, warm-up and other exercise-based modalities, it has not been found to be significantly superior to others. So this basically means, yes, it works, but it is entirely your choice whether to use it or not, based on your preference. So how does one choose a foam roller? Well, this is depends on what you need it for. So smooth foam rollers, such as this one, is used for spinal areas because it's nice and soft. Knobbly ones like this one is harder, so it's used for areas that require a bit more pressure. And especially this one that is hollow, because hollow apply more pressure. These are more durable as well and are used mostly for the legs. So preferably you start with the soft and then go on to a more hollow, more densible and more durable one to apply more pressure than a normal foam roller such as this one. And it's also a little bit heavier to carry though. So that's something to keep in mind. Longer versus short, longer ones are used for Pilates and rehab and short ones are used specifically for foam rolling. Now, how many times and what parameters to use it for? So there's a common consensus that the effects achieved are only temporary. So regular use of foam rolling is required for long-term benefits. But for the best results, use it for a minimum of 60 to 120 seconds on each area, about six to eight reps, and no less than 60 seconds, ideally before and after a workout or before and after an activity. So these are the three most favorite exercises that I like using more often in the clinic. And they are for specific things as well, but they are also used if you want to just use foam rolling and I'll just show you how to do them. So the first one is foam rolling your quads. And the reason why I like doing this is various. So one of the things is because we tend to have more of a sedentary type of lifestyle. They tend to get quite tight. And because of it's a, it is a dual joint muscle group, that will pull on both the hips and the knees. So anything like a patellar tendon problem, it can tend to pull on it. And um, any hip flexor problems, it tends to pull on it as well. So releasing tightness in your quads is really a good one. Also, if you do tend to be quite active, if you run and if you cycle, all these activities really tend to be dominant on your quads. So releasing them will help ease of any tightness 
low or high and it will really help as a good recovery for your quads so foam rolling your quads you can use either the um uh, the knobbly one because for the legs it's quite hard it depends if it's the first time you're going to do this you might find it very hard so you don't need to be using this you can also use your other foam rollers i've got other different types of foam rollers you can have it doesn't need to be a long one it can be a short foam roller which is nice and softer so you don't need to buy a long one for this so i'll show you with both so you'll have an idea what to do so you can foam roll your quads one at a time or both at the same time it depends how long your foam roller is so you basically want to just lie on a mat or a carpet and then place the foam roller i'm going to place it on both towards the top of the knees and then you're going to lie yourself placing your ties over onto the foam roller and just resting onto your elbows and what you're going to do is just roll your body towards and away from the foam roller using the weight onto your hands and then what you want to do, as I said, you repeat this about six to eight times, no less than about 60 seconds. You can either do it with time or repetitions. It's entirely up to you. And then what you want to do is if you want to address different areas, because your quads are quite wide in a way. So when you're doing it with both legs, you're doing just the front. So then you want to go more medially and more laterally. So then you can do it just on one leg. And what you do with the other leg is basically push it aside and use it to help stabilize your body. And you're just moving up and down, just a gentle massage. The first few times are gonna feel quite sensitive if you've never done foam rolling before. And always aim to reach towards the top of your hip and then coming all the way down to the top of the knee, but not on your kneecap. And then just turn your body to go a little bit more laterally and just adapt your hands and your leg on the other side for stability and again you might find that you'll be a little bit more sore towards the outer side or the middle side it depends where you tend to put most weight on your legs and you repeat the same thing onto the opposite leg so this is with the short one with the longer one or even if it's not long but it's not hollow it's going to be the same thing both legs on the foam roller and you just move up and down and then with this one, you just shift a little bit. It's a little bit harder if you have a long foam roller to move the opposite leg out of the way. So that's another advantage of having a shorter one versus a longer one. But you can adapt your body to be safe and when you're doing them uncomfortable. So again, then if you feel like you're quite high up and you want to push it down, just push it further down and focus on where you need the most and then drop it down and again aim for about 60 seconds maximum 120 seconds so two minutes of foam rolling on each body part if you want to buy reps you can do like six to eight repetition guideline so that's for your quads and that's going to head the front of your thigh the second one is to release your glutes so i find that this release of the glutes really help the lower back as well so i'm just going to basically just go through your glutes and then amalgamate it into your lower back so it's a little bit of a cheat one but for your back i would suggest you go softer even if it's for your glutes so if you're going to purely do it for your glutes you can use a small the knobbly one if it's for your back i would start off with the softer one so for your glutes you're going to keep it, you're going to sit onto the foam roller. Then we're going to use, this is my left leg. So you're going to put the left leg onto the right and then ever so slightly turn more towards the left. And this will expose more of your glutes. And all you want to do is roll over and then come back up. Sometimes if you're used to harder pressure, you might want to use the hollow knobbly one and that would be perfectly fine for you now a bit of a disclaimer for this one you need to make sure that if you suffer from piriformis syndrome this might not be a comfortable thing to do so you might want to avoid it altogether when you do foam rolling it should be like a comfortable kind of discomfort pain 
not one that's gonna make you feel more and more pain so it is one to help your um, mobility and help you to release any soft tissue tightness but not want to make it worse for you so if it does make it worse then just stop it there's a tendency that a lot of people over foam roll and there is such a thing as over foam rolling because you don't need to do it all the time just regularly rather than constantly now so that was for your bottom again you can go further up by going into your lower back and going into the lower back you just lean onto the foam roller, shift a little bit to the side, and you roll up and down. So I have this foam rolling into another video, which focuses on releasing your side QL muscle, and it will also go through that uh, release work with the foam roller. So if you wanted to do it with a shorter one, the glute release, sit down on it, bring your leg onto the opposite one, rotate a little bit so you are completely on that soft glute muscle and then you roll up and down. And again, you repeat that about six to eight repetitions or time-wise about 60 to 120 seconds, so about two minutes maximum. And then you release. Obviously, it is a little bit hard onto your wrists and hands because you do need to hold your body, but you take as many breaks as you wish. So, the last one, which is one of my all time favorites, is a combination of movement and soft tissue release. So, with this one, it is mostly for your upper back. So, what we will do is we'll be using the softer one for this one. If you have a knobbly one and you still want to do this, the other option you can do is put a towel over your foam roller to make it softer when you're putting pressure on it, just so it doesn't dig into your spine. Now, so for this one, lie on the foam roller. So the foam roller needs to lie also over the upper back. So you just lie on it and just position it just the level of your shoulder blade. Place your hands underneath your head and then just simply first things first, lift your bottom and just go up and down. A nice, easy foam rolling movement to release any tension into the upper back. After a day's work, it's amazing. And just have a little bit of release work first. And then once you've done that, you can drop your bottom, keep that foam roller kind of the level of your shoulder blades, place your hand underneath your head, and then just simply roll over it and then release <sighs> let your chest roll over it and release and then do a few movements in this position and then you can lower yourself further down so you have the foam roller going further up and then again roll over it and then come back the aim is that your chest moves and your upper back so don't push your neck too far back And then if you wanted an extra added stretch, you can lift your chest a little bit higher. So where you started off with, and then lengthen your arms towards the top. Just rest your head if you wanted to. You can bring a towel here to rest your head if you wish. And then reach. So again. If you wanted to have an extra towel, just place it underneath your head. Rest your head over it and reach your arms above it and let your chest open up. You don't need to reach the floor. You can even put your arms on the side or as arms rest on your head and that will just open up your chest and have a nice stretch through the upper back. Take a big breath in, and then breathe out. And ever so slightly, place your hands underneath your head, lift yourself back up, and then push yourself back up. So it's advised to do the exercise about six to eight repetitions, as I said before, on each area and repeat it regularly throughout the week, especially pre and post performance, because that really helps in reducing stiffness, in developing delayed onset muscle soreness, and all the symptoms that you normally use foam rolling for. So I really do hope you enjoyed this video. And if you do, please consider liking, commenting below, and subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. 
But until next time, I'm Ana Maria and I will see you in the next video. Bye.